Yeah. Okay, Marvin, I'm re yeah. recording. Yep. Yeah, so you know, man, you know me. You know, uh, you know, uh, you get chance, hope you get chance to talk to this guy. And, uh, you know, I ain't gonna call him for tomorrow, you know. And, uh, maybe he have some questions for you and you have some questions for him. But, you know, uh, I think what he basically wanna do is, uh, uh, some kind of promo or something, you know, uh, basically some kind of quick, quick, Story to uh, put out there. You know, I don't know what his, his angle is. And so, you know, uh, the, the lawyer's supposed to talk to him and stuff like that. You know, uh, one of the lawyers, I guess. You know, I don't know. But I can tell you something, man, that uh, we fight, man. You know, we going to keep on fighting. Absolutely. Man. You know, I'm going to tell you, man, you know, if the person says that seven years in jail don't start to affect them, there's something wrong, you know? Right, right. And, uh, you know, and like I say, uh, I just, I just hold on my face, but like I said, man, you know, I just want them to let the process take place behind stuff, destroying stuff, the statement that the officers made, you know, I've got statements from one team, and then when I got this new team of Carlos and Hackney Smith, you know, a, a whole lot of information was out. Right. You know, and just and uh, you know, it's just tough, man. You know, the, the whole system, it, it don't work. It's broken. It's broken. Because, uh, yes. you, yeah. So you got these prosecutors, man, that's overzealous. And they'll do anything to impose injustice on an ordinary citizen. And then they will turn around and do everything that they can do to get injustice served to the underprivileged uh, and get, you know, get law enforcement off for killing an innocent person. Right. You know? And I'm like, I'm like, wow, well, I don't have nothing against law enforcement. But, you know, but I'm just saying what I see. You know, you know, this VA office right here, uh, they do everything they can to come for the police. Action on innocent citizens. And they'll be, they'll turn around in a case like my case, where I'm innocent, they will do everything in their power to make me guilty of a crime that I didn't commit. Right. And, and in Texas, man, I mean, they just let a guy off the road because it's something like this, where they claim he shot an officer eight years. But he did, I don't know, nine years on death row. You know, and, you know, you know, that's bad, man. And these prosecutors, they don't, they're, they're unapologetic about what, 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 what's going on. But see, what happens is, if the people don't vote, they don't get involved in the voting process. So, a lot of times, these prosecutors, they, they're prosecuted for 20 and 30 years. I can regard even a prosecutor for 20 years. Right. And so, and so, he has no control over that DA's office. And so you just got like Fred Burns and all these other guys, they do what they want to do and he's going along with it. And so he could have stopped this from, from the beginning and said, hold up, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna dishonor our police officers and, you know, make false accusations to say that they got shot by people when they not, when they did it, you know, we're going to keep it straight with the public. Instead, they go the other route. Right. You know? Right. And so, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's true in a whole lot of places. We all, we all love our law enforcement. I do. I mean, I mean, we need law enforcement. And I'm not against law enforcement. 
I'm just against brutality and that blue line, you know, a code like in this case, they came to my house without a warrant. Then they attempted to enter my house. These were all crimes. They attempted to enter my house without a warrant. Then, you know, I did what the law says to do. You know, in Texas, there's no duty to retreat in your home from an unannounced and so that's what the law saying. So Marvin, the no yeah. Who did you think it was yeah. when all of that took place? Uh, that that morning well, that they raided your apartment. Who did you think it was? I thought it was, I thought it was some kids from across in the next uh, uh, Project Pope. They got a place called Rock Creek Park. They got a place called and it's uh, right across Fort Hood. They got some pretty bad kids and their young kids in there that be kicking people door in. And so they always would come over here on Circle Hill and they'll try to kick people doors in. So that's what I thought it was. Some, some young thugs, you know, kick doors, you know, try to kick my door to, to kill me, to rob me for my possessions in my house, uh, my TV, my jewelry, or something like that. That's what I was thinking. You know? Right. Now, now descri I mean. describe describe what happened to you at the hands of like Juan Obregon and the other police officers. Once you realized it was the police and you surrendered, and they were arresting you, what did they do to you? Well, okay, well, I was sleeping, and all of a sudden, I felt something sharp hit my leg because I had on sharp. So, some shorts. I guess it was glass or something. I don't know. But I turned around in a split second. You know, I fired low out the window. And I'm thinking, and I didn't hear nobody say nothing. And then I heard a whole lot of shots. And then I heard some say ceasefire. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell? You know, and it's, so I said, damn. So I dropped my weapon and I came out. And when I went to the back door, I seen a light. And that's the first time that I heard them say that, that they're the police. And uh, I came out, and I laid on the ground, and somebody jumped on my back. I don't know who it was, but somebody told me to get off my back and have me come up to where they were at. So I got up and I walked, and when I got to the corner, I mean, all I know is that I was going down, I was being taken down, and from that time, I don't remember uh, a lot, but from that time, of course, to the police officer, I was down, he was he just with me and stuck a gun in my mouth. And when I woke up, I heard uh, him asking the police, what do you want me to do? And I heard one of the cops, I don't give a shit what you do to him. And then he started calling me all these names and all this. And so one of the officers told me to chill out and to search me. And so I remember putting my pants down and my underwear down. I had on basketball shorts and my underwear down. And then I remember him digging in my anus and asking me where the drugs and that N word, right? And it was just so painful. I'm like, wow, you know, and then shortly after that, I heard a shirley, uh, 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 scream, and so, uh, Officer Will, must, from what, according to his report, he tackled her, broke her ribs, found her face into the ground, and she wasn't resisting either. And so, basically, he stuck a gun in my mouth, you know what I'm saying, and he stuck his hand on my ass, and actually, where the drugs that didn't work, and I said he got to tell me, how much he's gonna kill me, how much he hate this and hate that, hate that. And uh one of the other officers said, Listen, get him up off of him. And then uh I remember them, somebody pulling him up off of me and then I remember some officer coming down to the end the, the side of the building and I remember him saying, uh, get him up and then I remember after that I heard somebody they said, they is your lucky day. And they took me to the squad car. You know what I 
saying? Right. And I'm like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, the thing that is it, 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 uh, uh, when, uh, when I look at the affidavit, and many people have said that the affidavit was doctored after they committed the crime against me. You know, that's a hate crime. Yeah. You know, in Texas, I want, I want to say this. Um, on the website, okay, people can read. I've put all of the documents that Marvin has sent me. I've scanned them and put them on, on the website, freemarvinlguy.com. And it's on the legal documents page. I have multiple pages, but it's entitled Legal Documents. And on there, you can see a document entitled, I have it in big, bold letters, Marvin's Pretrial Motion Number 15. And it is entitled, Motion to Suppress Physical Evidence for Lack of Valid Consent to Search. And if you read that document, and highlights the police brutality that Marvin is detailing in this call. Now, what I also did is on the front page of the website, on the home page, I isolated all of the statements uh, from the police officers like Juan Obregon, who I mentioned before, and others and the admissions of the officers of the police brutality that they inflicted upon Marvin. That's right on the front page. I took out all the, the statements, highlighted them, that demonstrate and prove everything, substantiate what Marvin is saying. And it's so if you go on the if you go to freemarvinl.com on the home page, you'll see it entitled Marvin was a victim of serious police brutality. And it's all of those pages. So if you go to the documents page, you'll have to read the entire document. And that's that's like 28 pages. The document that I created from that is 15 pages. And it consists of all of these statements that prove that Marvin was a victim of police brutality, even from the words or the statements of the police officers. So anyone who sees it, check that out. Because I underlined all of the statements that prove this, and I circled a lot of the, the words to highlight what Marvin what was what was he what he was subjected to what he what was inflicted upon him and this man is a victim of, of major civil rights abuses constitutional rights abuses um, like an at lower that treated worse than an animal and it's all because the police messed up uh, they violated his rights they're they're what they've done is criminal and what I'm trying to do is spotlight and highlight folks I've been doing this for a while. Um, like Marvin said, I've been in this for a while, helping him to expose the corruption in this case and the injustice that he has uh, experienced for seven years. Imagine being in jail for seven years without a trial. Your rights have been violated, and yet the message in the media is that you're a criminal, is that you're a bad guy, right. is that you're a cop killer, right. is that you hate the cops. Right. And that's, it couldn't be, it couldn't be right. further from the truth. So if you go to, I'll just say this last thing. If you go to the website, freemarvinlguy.com, you'll see all of, all the information you could possibly get about Marvin's case. You can also go to Free Marvin Lewis Guy on Facebook. It's a Facebook page I created. And all the videos that I've recorded of Marvin's phone calls to me, his documents, everything is on both sites. So check that out. Share it. Get the word out about this grave injustice. Let's get going. Let's support this man because he's a United States citizen who has had all of his rights violated. He's not he's being denied justice and it's criminal. So share what you can. Buy a t-shirt. I created a t-shirt to raise financial support for his legal defense fund and for his case and his story to raise awareness about it. Do what you can to help this man because an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So Yeah, that's right. And they got they got wrote up here what they got wrote up for
and the league that it should be on Justin Jackson, and uh, I believe they might have took that out, but he still is short for the subpoena, you know what I'm saying? And only one the spot the spots him, but the team is the judge. So I'm concerned about that. And then they got brought up for A201 to prime required. That's an O3 violation. And then they got brought up for A, B, responsibility to know and understand. And so all these write ups, right? You know, it's not clear. It's a whole, everybody got rolled up, who got rolled up, and my lawyer hasn't been basically putting this stuff together. And so, like I said, he put me behind on his case, and I think that was his intention, you know, right. to uh, put me behind on the case. And the bottom line, the public is being told that, hey, his lawyer, oh, you see, when it comes to speedy trial, what my lawyer was doing behind my back, he was going in the uh, justice chamber and requested that it be a continuing. You know what I mean? Right. And so he was doing that for the DA. And so the DA can go to the public and say, hey, he asked for a continuing. So, you know, but he wasn't ready because he don't have the necessary qualifications to represent himself to the case, you know what I'm saying, because his skill is, uh, he, uh, his skill is, um, he's, uh, what you call, uh, uh, I forgot what his skills were, but he, he don't have really skills to represent those cases. He's been on the case before, according to him, but he's never been a first chair. So, you know, you don't have to be a first chair, you don't have to have, like I'm explaining, Oh, if you hire a lawyer, that's your business to you hire. If you hire a lawyer that's a marriage counselor, and it's that all he has to do is know the law and be bar certified. A lot of these lawyers like Carlos Garcia and uh, Michael White, they, they divorce attorneys, and they don't got the skills to represent these cases, but they're getting on these cases. And so what I was really dumbfounded by is when you had Michael White and you had Russ Hunt. Russ Hunt was board certified as Delta County, right? Michael White wasn't. So they're, they, but they were never questioned. As to the judge never said that you're going to be the first chair of Russ Hunt because you, you're, you're Delta County qualified. And Michael White, you're going to be the second chair. But he did that to Justin Moore and Michael Ware, you know, and I, and I was, right. was dumbfounded when that when it happened. I'm like, wait a minute. This, who, the judge don't get his phone. It's not supposed to give you legal advice. And that's, that's borderline making a legal decision in my case. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm like, man, this is, this is, this is just, and so that just raised questions, questions about, more questions about, Michael Ware, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's so this 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 crazy man because you know I'm gonna say this, and, and I'm not standing in a negative type of way, but if you're African American attorney in Texas, you're not respected. Right. Your craft, your craft is not respected. That's why when Justin Kane on, they question his ability. You have one minute left. And that, that was troubling to me, man. You know, I'm going to call you back after this one. And that was, that, that was troubling to me that they questioned his ability as an attorney. And the reason why is because he wasn't part of the team. That right. They usually take me down. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like I said, they're hiding information and stuff like that. I'm glad you gave that shout out, though, because a lot of people have a problem. Finding, uh, finding different stuff. You know, because a lot of people say, man, I can't find this. I can't find that. You know, but now, since you put that out, well, I have, you know, uh, I've got a lot of stuff i got to do, though, to make it easier for people to find this stuff. I mean, it's laid out uh, categorically on the website, 
and it shouldn't be that difficult for people, but I'm going to, I'm going to remedy that.